That's right. We're going to do some dirty deeds today. <laughs> Hi, Philip, the uh, casual pilot back with you for another vlog. This time we are going to do something totally cool that I have been looking forward to and wanting to do for years. And the chance is finally here. Thanks to my friend Roger Stuckey, right? Stuckey. Mm -hmm. um, see that plane right there? I get to go flying in that in a little bit. So look out for that. We're going to have some fun. But first, before we get rolling here, remember down there on the bottom, subscribe to my channel, like my videos, uh, comment, and tell us what you like, and I'll try my best to bring you more fun general aviation and remote control plane content because I'm that's a casual pilot. I don't fly a real plane, but I fly a plane. That's right. And I'm a plane <laughs> nerd. So <laughs> we're going to have some fun today. So first, Roger. Tell us about this beautiful plane. This is a Acroduster SA750. It's a two-place experimental biplane, home-built. It was built back in 1991 uh, from plans, which means they're just a set of drawings, and the builder had to source all the components, all the parts, construct every 100% of this airplane, unlike a kid airplane where a lot of it comes pre-made and you just bolt it together. This is complete scratch build airplane. Wow, kind of like us, the RC world where a lot yes. of the old timers build it from balsa and plywood Absolutely. sticks and they cut them. And Same kind of construction methodology. Except it's metal. Well, this has got a combination. So the wings, they have wooden ribs and they have a wooden spar. The frame has metal tubing in it, aluminum in the front, and it's fabric covered in the back and the wings are fabric covered. So it's a, it's a real airplane. I've had this airplane for about five years now. Did you uh, build it? I did not build it. It was built by a, a guy named James Stowe who, was, who started actually constructing it in California. In his career, he, I, I don't know exactly what his career was as far as a profession, but he had to do a corporate transfer. So he moved to Texas where he finished the airplane source the engine, put it all together, and then did the FAA fly off on it for 40 or 50 hours of flight time. Um, shortly after he got it airworthy and ready for flights with passengers, he got transferred overseas. And so he had to put the airplane up for sale, uh, and it was bought by the second owner. He owned it from about 93 until I bought it from him uh, five years ago. Oh, okay. So how many uh, hours do you think you've put in it? I have over 200 hours on it right now. So the story behind my relationship with this airplane is uh, when I was in Minnesota, I flew with a, a friend of mine who was a Northwest Airline pilot. His name was uh, Ron Powers. And Ron had an Acroduster. And um, he taught me how to fly tailwheel airplanes in that Acroduster. And I immediately fell in love with it. It's open cockpit. Um, the wind in your face, the sound of the engine, the unlimited visibility that you get out of that, it's a very unique experience. Unlike flying in a Cessna or, or any enclosed airplane, you're kind of open to the wind and, and exposed to the air. So, um, but it's a lot more fun for me to fly that kind of airplane. So that relationship with flying Ron's airplanes back in the 1980s set me on a course that said, someday I will own an Acroduster. And here I am. Is that the original paint? <clears throat> this is the original paint job. Now it's been repainted, but it's the same paint scheme. Um, it was just repainted last year, but you know, from a color standpoint, it's pretty darn when identical to what it was. you first told me about taking me for a ride in your Acro Duster, the first thing I do is Google Acro Duster. Mm -hmm. Plus I'd seen a picture of sure. your plane on your Facebook yep. page, but I wanted to learn a little bit about it. And I have to admit in all the images that I found, mm -hmm. this is like the coolest color scheme. Yeah. You know, yeah. The red and yellow, burgundy and yellow. It looks like it's got a little metallic in there. A little bit of metallic in it. It yep. is absolutely gorgeous. Thank you. So, Thank you. So the, the original paint scheme was red and yellow, just like this. I did put, when they repainted it, had them put a uh, red metallic on the wing leading edges just to give it a little extra pop. All right, so uh, what have we got in store for the day on this thing? So today, um, this afternoon, I'm going to take you up to uh, EA Chapter 93's Hangar Hangout. Mm -hmm. We'll have dinner up there, it'll be mm -hmm. at Sauk Prairie food. Airport. Planes and food. Planes and food, you can't go wrong with that, right? Uh, but we'll leave here four or so, and because it's going to start at five, and then it'll be your choice if we go fly along the Wisconsin River or if we go fly through uh, Devil's Lake. 
whichever yeah. one you want to do. Or actually, we might could even do both depending on how far we run along the river if we wanted to do that. So I might go that option. That way I get the best of both worlds. There you go. We can absolutely do that. So the first time I saw stuff about this plane, you had your GoPro 360 camera. Please yes. tell me you got that ready for It's you. sitting on the other wing waiting to go. Yes. <laughs> I've got GoPros to put in the cockpit. Yes. It is almost time. And if you can't see it, I got a huge smile on my face. We're about to uh, get strapped in. I have managed to get my GoPro mounted inside. We've got the 360 camera right there. That's going to be cool footage. And walking around. I have my GoPro down there to try and catch the reaction on my face because I'm sure there will be more than a frown on my face so if I was tell you I wasn't a little bit excited that'd be nuts because man this is like a dream for me I, I've been looking forward to this so I think we're gonna go fly along the Wisconsin River and then out over Devil's Lake so oh man it's gonna be some pretty footage so I can't, can't, can't wait to get strapped in and have a little bit of fun. Let's see what this thing's got.
Ooh, all I can say is that was fun. Oh my goodness, flying along the Wisconsin River, and of course we're at like 2,500 feet, and then we dive down to 200 feet and just fly right over the water. Very exhilarating, very fun. I'm happy to say I didn't get the feeling too bad. However, once we got closer, the uh, started getting a little bit of the motor heat up into where I was sitting and a little exhaust up my nose and I did get a little queasy there for a little bit, but I fought it off, stuck my head out in the wind a little bit and uh, made it just fine. It's good to be down, but that ride home is going to be fun too. I'm still learning a lot about planes, but this little one here is something. It's a Lancer. You can see it's slick, fast. They say this little sucker just cruises right along at 200 plus miles an hour. It's got retracts and everything. The guy that I rode with, Roger, he called it a race car. He's actually flown in it before, and he said it is fast. But it's so little. It's almost like a model-sized airplane. I'm standing next to it. It's not that big. They fly souped-up versions of these at Reno that uh, the suckers go like 400 plus miles an hour. But for a home-built, small plane, 200 plus miles an hour, very cool. Jeff. Yes. What are you doing? I am preparing your, your dinner. I want to fortify you after your big flight. And hope it stays down? Oh, of course. Roger, steady Eddie. <laughs> steady Eddie, Roger. What else we got? Uh, we got some burgers that Pat O'Malley fired up for us over there. He had O'Malley's Cafe for many, many, many years. And then the you used to own the Jet Room, my favorite That's place right. in the world That's to go. Right. Yeah. Are you the Pat O'Malley? Um, I'm related to him. Oh, oh, I am. <laughs> who's asking? You're the one that used to own the Jet Room. The Jet Room. My and favorite then, restaurant to go you. to. And prior to that, the O'Malley Farm Cafe. Yep, I've read the menu 20, at the Jet Room with 20, the whole history. 20 quick years there, 20 quick years at the Jet Room. That's some good food there, and the people that bought it seem to be keeping yeah, it pretty much doing, the same way. They are. They are. They're doing a nice job. They they're actually know us busy. by name. We're there enough. Well, good. <laughs> so. Your legacy yeah, business lives on. We're pleased that you know we found good buyers, and it was uh, with mixed feelings that we sold. But when the opportunity strikes, one must take advantage of it. But you gotta now. You have time to play and I fly. Do. All right, we are here with Lynn. Correct. That is correct. Let me get my shadow off of you. And yeah. uh, this was your hanger that we were hanging out and chowing at tonight, right? Yes, yes. I've had this one since 1999. That's a while, and we're standing next to your like really cool plane. Yeah. Tell nice. me a little bit about this. It's beautiful. Uh, a friend and I decided we wanted a fun airplane, so we chose the Great Lakes based on the fact that it has a little more room in it than, say, maybe a Stearman. Well, a Stearman has a lot of room, but a Pitts just doesn't have as much room. Those things are little. Yep, they are small. And my partner in the airplane is is a bigger guy than I, but uh, we found this airplane. Went and did a search and uh, found it out in uh, Pennsylvania. Uh, the gentleman that had it out there had done restoration on it, so all of the work and what you see here uh, is is more uh, from him him doing the work than us. But uh, we love flying it. Uh, it's an airplane that originally was designed in the 20s, late 20s. Uh, it went out of production for a while. But then they saw the benefit of it. They went back into production in the 70s. So this airplane is made in Enid, Oklahoma in the 70s. It's a 1977, one of 136 that were built in the 70s. And uh, the guys over in Battle Creek, Michigan, uh, classic aircraft, uh, they saw the benefit of it and uh, they went into production with them. Uh, started in 2011 and uh, produced the first airplane in 2013. So you can actually buy this airplane new now and uh, parts are available. That's really big when you talk about uh, airplanes. 
But talking. if it was new, it wouldn't be near as cool as yours. Ah, well, that's probably true. <laughs> so, uh, how many hours do you think you got in this baby? Oh, probably a couple hundred. And uh, both he and I went to Chandler, Arizona, Chandler Air Service. They actually have four of these specific airplanes, and they can teach you up through competitive aerobatics if you want to. We went through their program and flew their aerobatic program with their airplanes, and we did a bit of that before we bought the airplane, just first to see if it fit us and we could get it on, and second to see if we like the flying characteristics. So, I gotta ask you one question. Mm -hmm. Have you been inverted? Oh yeah. Have you flown inverted? Uh, I, well, you can fly inverted in this for three minutes or until your head explodes, One, <laughs> whichever happens first. And I usually don't like to go three minutes. Yeah, all right, well thanks Lynn for having the yeah, party yeah. out here, it was fun. Um, I got to fly out in another cool biplane and that was quite the rush and I'm sure yours is really cool too. Yeah, so that's a lot Thanks of fun. for hosting everybody out here and uh, What a great day, we got plane. the perfect day for it. Can't complain too much about this, can yeah, you? No, no. Okay, we're here with Scott, what's your last name? Whiteman. Scott Whiteman, and this is his Kit Fox in the background. Tell us a little bit about your plane, Scott. Yeah, this is one that I bought already built. It's a 2003, 2003 is when it was first flown, as far as I can tell from the, the books. Um, I'm the third owner. It has right now about 1,800 hours on it. Which is high, I Which is a it? lot of time for a home built, and that's one of the reasons I bought it, because it's in really pretty good shape considering that number of hours. And I bought it in Massachusetts about five or six years ago. Flew it home and... I bet that was quite a trip. Oh, that was a fun trip, yeah. I was, I was amazed at how fast it goes. Well, that... Compared to, uh, I've been flying um, Cessna 150, a Skyhawk, and also a Luscombe. And, and I had a home built too for a while. Um, so this is about 115 miles an hour ground speed. That's that's the average. So I'll get you home a little quicker. Yep, yep. And uh, it's very responsive, very sporty. Uh, has a 912 ULS. It's a Rotex 912. Burns about five gallons an hour, and uh, it's fairly easy to fly. Um, it's got tricycle gear. Tricycle gear is good for a lot of different kinds of winds. That. I like to fly in, so. Um, Have you done any fun things to make it better? I, yeah, I added, first thing I added was a cabin heater. <laughs> this is Wisconsin. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so now you can fly in the winter, right? Yep, yep, it's got a good cabin heater. Thanks for giving me the nickel tour of the yeah. plane, and uh, it's a beautiful plane. Thank you. I saw you fly in on it, and it looked like you were having some fun. Yeah, so, yep, um, fun airplane. We sat across from each other at dinner and started uh, chatting, and. I even conned him into signing up for my YouTube channel. Yeah. So he's officially subscriber 187. You should make that your N number, N187. Oh. Anyway, he's a subscriber now. You can be too, you know, down there, subscribe, hit the button. So thanks guys and thanks Scott. It has been a really fun night. Got to meet a lot of people. Got You got to meet a few of the people. And very soon we will be hopping back in that little guy and heading for home. So I think I'm gonna put the camera away now and unless somebody else comes up with something really cool for me to film, I'm going to start packing my gear up and get them ready. And because it'll be a little dark, we probably won't be getting any filming done on the trip home. So anyway, I hope you enjoyed the uh, video. Make sure to like and subscribe when you see the little head of me pop up down there subscribe to the channel and uh, you'll see more fun content there's going to be more of these planes that i get to go flying in plus huh, there's always fun rc content